Hi there, today I'd like to show you a few of the features of Web Starts that will help you create a pixel perfect design. The first one that I want to talk about is guidelines. When you select an object or an element in Web Starts and you drag it, you'll notice these pink lines appear. These make a suggestion or these guidelines suggest where you might drop this element in correlation with another element on the page. So here you can see that I'm using this title text and I'm lining it up perfectly with this paragraph text box that's just below it by using the pink guideline. The next thing I'd like to talk to you about is called Snap 2. Web Starts has a feature that allows you when dragging to snap to other elements. So for example, you can see me dragging the text and once I get close to this image on my right, it snaps down and it goes into place. Both Snap2 and Guidelines can be disabled if you'd prefer not to use them by clicking on View and then just unchecking the appropriate place here. With Web Starts, you can also move elements one pixel at a time using your arrow keys on your keypad or your keyboard. As you tap, you can see elements move in any direction one pixel at a time. If that's happening too slowly for you, just hold the shift key and then tap the arrow keys as well. Another thing that helps you create a great looking design with Web Starts is called the header. The header is everything in this section that's highlighted in green right here and it's separated from the body of your website by this dotted line. When you place elements in your header, they appear on every web page. So for example, you would place your logo, maybe your business name, and your website navigation into your header. And then those things would appear on every page of your site. If you go to the bottom of the page, you'll see what's called the footer. Footer works just like the header, except it's at the bottom of the page. So when you drag things into the footer of your website, those things are added to the bottom of each page of your site. Let me show you how that works. Here, I'm going to insert a social bar. I'm going to change the color to gray. And because the footer is at the bottom of the page, if you drag an element into it, it's going to push that footer down the page. But I want to actually place this element within the footer. So what I need to do is select the element, drag, and then hold the shift key. And here you can see it says attach to footer. Once I like where that's located, I let go. And the element's been added to my footer. You can view the position of any element on the page and this is perfect for placing elements in the exact right spot. To do this, click View and then select Element Position. Let me show you how that works. Now when I drag, you can see the X and Y coordinates of my elements as I drag across the page. This is perfect if, let's say for example, I have another page where I'd like a button to be in this exact same location. I can simply write down the coordinates where I placed that button and then I can move the element to that position on the other page. I can also resize any element by value. Once you select an element, click on the resize by element icon and then you can direct type in the width and height of an element in pixels. So for example, if I'd like to increase the width and the height of this button, I can enter in the pixels and click OK and then it's applied to my button. If I like the elements that I create, the fastest and easiest way to make a copy of them is to use the duplicate tool on the toolbar. I can select an element, then simply click duplicate and it will make a copy that I can then drag and drop wherever I'd like to appear. If I ever make a mistake, I can always click the undo option on the toolbar. And if I ever would like to go back, I can click the redo option. So keep those in mind when working with your website.
Another thing that I like to do from time to time is put a little bit of padding around my text. That means instead of having the border of the, the text box crammed right up next to my actual text, I can add some padding by selecting the padding option and then dragging the slider to add the appropriate amount of padding. Usually find about 10 pixels looks good and that really helps to create some white space if you have a lot of clutter on your page, uh, other elements, that sort of thing. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching today. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to webstarts.com on YouTube by clicking the subscribe button at the end of this video. And also don't forget to visit webstarts.com to create your very own free website.